Hello folks, welcome to our next installment of Integrating Stuff. Okay, first thing I want us to do today is take a minute and go down this list of integrals. They all look very similar, right? And tell me, is this something that can be done with U substitution or not? Okay, it's either yes, I can handle this with U sub or no, I cannot. Okay, take a minute and go ahead and do that. So here's the thing. We can only do U sub if whatever my cloud is has a D cloud sitting there, right? So if you said, hey, I can do U sub with number one because my cloud is X squared, right? So my derivative is going to be 6X. I have an X sitting here. Awesome. I'll put in the 6 and the 1 sixth, and I'm good to go. Check. I can do U sub there. Okay. If you said you could do U sub on number five, also true. Again, my cloud is 3x to the third, so my d cloud that I need is 9x squared. I happen to have the x squared sitting here. Awesome. I put in my 9 and my 1 ninth. I'm ready to go. Okay. These three, though, I have a problem. Okay. In this one, I need a 6x, just like I did up here. I don't have my x. This isn't going to work. I'm missing an x. That's bad news, right? I can put in the six, I can't put in the x. Right? Here, my cloud is just three x, so I'll, all I need is a three, right? And I can fix that, but I have an x sitting there, right? This has an extra x that I don't need. That's just as bad of a situation. Okay? And then here, we have the same problem as we did before, nine x squared cool, I have an X, but I need another one. So again, I can put the nine in. I have one X, I can't put the other X in. So I'm missing an X. Okay. Now the reason we're looking at these, is two things. Number one, U sub is always our first line of defense, right? We're gonna look at an integral and we're gonna see if we can make it be U sub. Okay. If an integral is U sub, that's because the derivative we're looking at is a derivative that came very simply from a function that got chain ruled. In other words, if I had a function like sine of x squared, it wasn't a product initially, oops, it's not f prime, it's just f, but when I take the derivative, because of the chain rule, it becomes a product. So if I'm backing this up, this is going to be a u substitution integral. When those pieces don't line up like that, like what happens in two, three, or four, that means the derivative came not from just a simple chain rule, but from something else. Okay. So the next thing that we look at is, well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it came from a product rule, right? Because that's another place where we get product derivatives. Okay, so anytime U substitution doesn't work, things don't fit. In other words, I need to be able to put those puzzle pieces together. Some things in the integrand, some things in the DU. I need to be able to make a function in terms of cloud and have the D cloud, and everything has to work out perfectly. If that doesn't work, then what we're looking at is a product okay, that we can't undo, right? In other words, it wasn't as simple as a chain rule because that's what U substitution answers. U substitution answers the chain rule. So we need to undo a product. Okay, now, um, if you are taking notes, I demand at this moment that you put your pencil down, pen, whatever you're writing with, your crayon. Okay, I'm gonna show you the what we're, where this is coming from, um, but in the end, by the bottom of this screen, there's going to be a formula, and that formula is simply something we're going to memorize, okay? It's a rewrite. I'm sorry, but I want to show you where it comes from, because otherwise it's like, doesn't make any sense. All right, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to back up the product rule. So what you see in front of you here is very simply the product rule, right? If you take the derivative of a product, uv, you land on u times v prime plus v times u prime. We all know that, right? Okay, I hope we do. Right, so the next thing that we do, the first thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to say, you know what, well, I'm trying to back up this derivative, right? So let's integrate both sides. Right. When I do that, on the left-hand side, I have the integral of a derivative. Hmm. 
And on the other side, I have the integral of this product. Okay. So if I evaluate that, on the left-hand side, I have a fundamental theorem situation here, right? I have a derivative and integral canceling each other out. What I'm going to get left with is just that product. Okay. Over here, it's simply the rule for addition, so I can break this into two integrals. And what I end up is something like this. Okay. And again, this is just the fundamental theorem, so this integral and the derivative canceled each other out. Whoops, oh my. Okay. Canceled each other out. And I'm left with my UV over here. It's very simply breaking them into two parts. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. The next step is this is the thing we're going to memorize. And it looks a lot different, but when you really look at it, all it is is a little algebra rewrite. Okay, so here it is. This is the thing you want to write down. Okay, all we did was we isolated the integral of UV prime. So we isolated this guy. Right. So I took this integral to the other side. So I have u v minus the integral of v u prime. Right. And this is what we're going to use. This is the formula for what we call integration by parts. So this is the formula that you want to write down. I'm going to give it to you in terms of hearts and clouds here in a moment. Okay. But this is a memorizer. Or if the AP is online, this is uh, make sure it's on your sheet that you hold in front of you. But memorizing is better. All right, so um, here again is your formula, and here it is in hearts and clouds or rectangles or whatever you want it to be, right? So what I'm going to do here is instead of trying to break my integral up into a function in terms of cloud and the derivative of that cloud, because we already tried that and it didn't work, we're going to break our integral into two pieces, something I'm going to call u and something I'm going to call v prime. Now v prime better contain the dx, Right? because that's the, that is a derivative. Right? So I'm always going to make sure my dx is included there, and you'll also see another reason why in a moment. Right? And from the product rule, here's what I know. I know that if I take an integral and I define part of it as u and part of it as v prime, then I can rewrite it like this. And you may be thinking, why on earth would I want to do that? Well, notice what happens when you rewrite it. Right? When you rewrite UV, the integral of UV prime as this, which we know is true, you end up with a different integral, right? You end up with the integral of a V and U prime. The hope, fingers crossed, is that now this is an integral I can evaluate. So these two expressions are equivalent, right? The idea is that we're taking something we can't integrate and using this rewrite that we know is true to turn it into some product minus some integral that we can evaluate. In other words, we're backing up the product rule here. So here it is in terms of clouds and hearts, right? I'm going to take my integral, I'm going to break it into something that I'm calling cloud and something that I'm calling heart prime. And remember, the dx better be part of your heart prime. So then what I need to do is take those things off to the side, cloud and heart prime, and I'm going to need to find cloud prime, which shouldn't be hard because it shows up right here. And I'm going to need to find heart because heart shows up in two spots, right here and right here. Right? So this is simple, a simple derivative, right? And if I have heart prime and I want heart, this is an integral. So in order to take your original integral and rewrite it, you have to go off to the side do an integral and do a derivative, and then you can put the pieces back together. Okay, So now, again, all we're doing is rewriting, fingers crossed, that we'll have a new integral that we can actually write. All right, so I cannot stress this enough. Integration by parts is simply giving us, to way, giving us a way to rewrite an integral that we can't do with something we can do. Okay, so again, we know we're backing up something that wasn't as simple as a chain rule derivative. If it was something as simple as a chain rule derivative, u substitution would have worked. u substitution didn't work. So our next thing is, well, maybe it was a product. Maybe it was a product rule. Okay. So if that's the case, then integration by parts should work. Okay. All we're doing is rewriting an integral that currently we cannot do into two chunks a product and another integral. 
and hoping, hoping, hoping. See, I have a horseshoe with his fingers crossed. That's how hopeful we are for good luck. That the new integral, the VU prime, is something we can integrate. All right, so keep that formula handy. <clears throat> the first thing we need to talk about is how are we going to decide when we look at our original integral? What's U and what's DV, right? In other words, what's cloud and what's heart prime? How do I decide what to make the chunk I'm going to take the derivative of and what to make the chunk I'm going to take the integral of? Right? Um, and again, I'm going to stress enough <laughs> that your DV or your heart prime has to contain the DX. And the reason for that is you're going to integrate that, right? Whatever you choose as your DV or your heart prime, we said you're going to have to integrate it. So you better have a DX sitting there. Okay, this is, uh, I guess they call these acronyms, right? Pittsburgh Public loves acronyms for how we're going to choose our U. The thing we want to choose, what we're going to take the derivative of. Right? And we are going to work from left to right. Okay, if there is a log in your integral, that is your numero uno choice for what your U should be. Okay, and the reason for that is, I don't know how to integrate the log, right? I know the derivative of a log, it's quite simple. And in fact, when you take the derivative of a log, the log disappears, right? If you take the derivative of the ln of x, it turns into one over x. So when I rewrite my integral, it's not gonna have a log in it anymore. That'll be handy. Next, if you don't have a log, if there's an inverse trig, that's a super good idea for a u. Again, when you take the derivative of the inverse trig, you no longer have an inverse trig function. You have a one over the square root of something, or maybe a one over one plus x squared. It gets rid of that, and therefore, hopefully, makes it easier for us to integrate our new integral. Okay, next, algebraic, and by that we mean like a power of x. So if you have something like x cubed, or x to the fourth, right? That's a good choice for your u. Again, these are easy to take the derivative of, and when you take the derivative of these, they're gonna get knocked down a power. So, for example, if you have an integral like the one in the beginning, where we had an extra x hanging around, ooh, great idea to make this your u, because when you take its derivative, it's gonna knock it down a power. Okay. If none of those exist, our next choice would be a trig function. Okay, because I can take the derivative of any trig function, but also notice it's towards this end because if I have to make it my dv, I can, some trig functions I can integrate. And then last but not least, exponentials. So again, we're gonna follow this as far as picking our u left to right. I want the things to the left are more likely to be my u, the things to the right are more likely to be my dv, right? This is more likely to be my cloud, this is more likely to be my heart prime. Okay. Is this foolproof? No, it is not. Is integration by parts going to work every time? No, it is not. Right? But this is a darn good way to get there if it's possible. Right? This gets you there more often than not. And if integration by parts isn't going to work, it's not going to matter what you choose. Okay. All right. Ready to do one? Okay. Let's go do one. Okay. Let's go. We look at this integral. We see a product. The first thing we want to try is u sub, right? We saw this one earlier. If I use my e to the 3x and call that my cloud, then I need a 3 for my d cloud, which is fine but I've got this extra x sitting here, and that's no good. Sad face, right? This is not a u sub, can't do it. So as soon as you see an extra x hanging around, that is screaming for integration by parts. So let's go over here to Leate and see what's going on. All right, <clears throat> there's no log, there's no inverse trig. There is, however, an algebraic expression, and it just happens to be this extra x hanging around. So that is a great choice for my u. Right. E to the 3x dx, therefore, becomes my entire dv. In other words, cloud and I'm going to call it rectangle prime. Okay. So, if those are my parts that I'm choosing, then I need to come over here and find the other parts I'm going to need, right? If cloud is x, if you follow me here, right? 
if my cloud, which I'm also calling my U, for those of you who don't like clouds, is X, then my cloud prime, also known as DU or U prime, is just equal to 1 DX. Also need to do the integral here to find my V. So if my rectangle prime, also known as my DV or my V prime, is equal to e to the 3x dx, then in order to find my rectangle, also known as my v, I need to integrate that. Well, when I integrate e to the 3x, oh, looky, looky, it's a u sub integral. <laughs> I've got a cloud up here, 3x, I put a 3 and I put a 1 third. So I get 1 third e to the 3x. Okay. I have my four parts. Okay. It is worth noting here, we've done an integral, technically we're supposed to add a plus c, but I will tell you, it ends up just um, not mattering if you add the plus c here or not, you still just end up with one constant in the end. Um, when I learned this, my teacher just said, you don't add the plus c there, and didn't tell us why, and I was like, cool, and wrote it down, because that's the kind of student I was. And a couple years ago, a kid was like, why don't you add a c there? And I was like, that's a good point. So we've added the C and we ran through the whole process and guess what? Poof, it didn't matter. It just caused us a little bit of extra work. So I would very highly recommend just not putting the C there. It's not that we did an integral and there's some reason we don't have to add plus C. It's just that it ends up canceling out. So who cares? All right. So let's put this, let's, uh, we took it apart. Let's, let's put Humpty Dumpty back together again here. So I'm going to start with x e to the 3x dx is my original integral. Okay, and I need to rewrite it. So I'm taking my u and my dv, my cloud and my rectangle prime, and I'm rewriting it as u, v, or cloud rectangle. So notice your non-integrating part, your first part, is just going to be your two not prime things. I shouldn't have any dx's out here, right? So it's going to be x and one-third e to the 3x. So one-third x e to the 3x minus the integral of my v and my du, or my rectangle and my cloud prime. Okay. For remembering, <laughs> it's just a switch. You started with u and dv, you end up with v and du, right? So 1 third e to the 3x times my du, or my cloud, which is dx. And again, this is just a formula that we've memorized. I'm not working any magic here. All right, so the idea is this. <clears throat> I have rewritten this integral that I couldn't do into two things. This product and this integral that I'm now hoping I can do. Right? Great news. We can do this. This is just a u sub integral. I can do this. In fact, I kind of just did do it up here. Right? I've got a one third and then I just need to integrate e to the 3x. So x e to the 3x dx is equal to 1 third x e to the 3x minus, I'm going to pull this 1 third out, right? and then I have the integral of e to the 3x. So I know I need a 3 and a 1 third to balance it. So that ends up being 1 ninth e to the 3x. Okay. So 1 ninth e to the 3 x. That is an integral I can do. And then now that I think I'm done, plus c. All right. So I took the integral I can't do. I rewrote it using that formula into the, a product minus a new integral. And then I said, okay, now I'm going to integrate my new integral because I can now. So this is what I'm calling my answer. And what we mean by that, remember, is that if I took the derivative of this, I would get this, right? That's what we're saying. The original question was, whose derivative is this? And we're saying, this guy, that's whose derivative it is. In other words, we're saying that this product, it didn't come from a chain rule. It came from a product rule, this product rule right here. Okay, so let's see. Let's do it. I love it when it works. Let's hope I didn't make any little mistakes. <laughs> okay, so let's take the derivative of this and see what we get. We better get this or we're in trouble. All right, this is a product, right? So I need 1 third x times the derivative of e to the 3x. So that would be e to the 3x times 3 
plus e to the 3x times the derivative of 1 third x, which is just 1 third, minus, this is not a product, so this is an easy one, 1 ninth e to the 3x chain rule times 3, the derivative of the c is just 0. Okay, here we go. Cancel, cancel, I have an x e to the 3x. 1 third e to the 3x, cancel, cancel, minus 1 third e to the 3x, heck yeah, plus and minus, and look what we land on, x e to the 3x, and isn't that right what we started with? The question was whose derivative is this? Here's your answer, it was this guy. We would never have been able to guess and check that one, right? But again, there's only a couple places products come from. Maybe it came from a chain rule. If it did, it's going to pop out to be a u sub integral. Maybe it came from a product rule. If it did, we should be able to back it up using integration by parts. Okay, let's do one more. I'm going to go through one more kind of quickly um, because sometimes it's better to see it quickly. And then um, we'll talk more about these on um, Monday the next time we see each other. All right, so let's take a look. Once again, I've got cosine of x. So I really want this to be my cloud, right? But then my cloud prime is just 1, and I got this extra x sitting here, right? This is not a good situation. This is not a u sub, right? But again, extra x is screaming integration by parts. So let's go back to Liate. I have a trig function, and I have an algebraic expression. Do, do. That's what I want my u to be. That makes all of this my dv. All right, so my cloud, my rectangle, prime. So those are my two parts. Let's find the other parts. If u is x, then du is going to be 1 dx. If dv is cosine x dx, then v is the integral of that, which is just sine x, because the derivative of sine is cosine. There's my four parts. Let's put it together. I know my rule that the integral of u dv has to be u v minus the integral of v du. That is literally in my brain forever. You'd wake me up from a coma and ask me this formula and I'd spit it out. And that's kind of how well you have to know it as well. All right, so let's put our pieces back together. We, we broke it up, let's put it back together. I've got x cosine x dx has to be equal to u v x sine x minus the integral of v du, sine x and then dx. All right, see what we got here. Have we rewritten it as something we now know how to do? This integral, sine x dx, I can do that. That's not even a u sub. That's just a regular old trig integral. Okay. Again, notice what happened. There was an extra x. By making it my u, what shows up in the new integral is the derivative of u. So anytime you have an extra x, making it your u gets rid of it. So even if this was an x cubed and I needed an x squared, making it my du knocks it down a peg, right? That's great news. So I can do this integral. So here's what I know. The integral of x cosine x dx has to equal x sine x minus the integral of sine, which is negative cosine, so plus sine x plus c. We got it. Quick as that. Okay, so I, want, I did one quickly because I wanted you to see it really doesn't take as long as you might think by watching me try to explain it, right? It goes, it goes pretty quick when you have the formula memorized, right? So just for funsies, because why not? Let's take the derivative of this and make sure we get x cosine x. Right. So we have a product rule here. So x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, plus sine x times the derivative of x, is just 1, plus the derivative of cosine, which is bingo, bango, negative sign, cancel, cancel, x cosine x. We got it. All right. Um, integration by parts is pretty magical. Again, it's not always going to work. And when we talk next time, we'll talk about kind of the twists and turns that we see, right? They're not all, they're not always super straightforward like this, but um, we will talk about that the next time we meet. Um, any questions you have, pop them in the end of this video and we'll see you soon.